A glance, a smile, an embrace, an image that stops time and brings home a memory. Brings it home like HBO. Anne Bancroft and Anthony Hopkins star as transatlantic correspondents whose mutual love of books forms the basis of a lasting friendship. 84 Charing Cross Road is next. As March arrives to melt winter snow, you'll find all the hits on HBO. That's beautiful. That was artistic. You think that was good? Run! Oh, oh, oh. Raj, meet your new partner. Mel Gibson is poetry in motion, but that spells trouble for the bad guys. And Danny Glover isn't crazy about him either. You haven't met anybody you didn't kill? If they can just stand each other, crime won't stand a chance. Well, I haven't killed you yet. Lethal Weapon. This is going to be a whole new experience. I just hope I'm up to it. Matthew Broderick is on special assignment. These are monkeys. But the Air Force may not be ready for what he's up to in Project X. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Are you ready to stay up? Freddy's back. And this time, he's planning a dreamy reunion with seven old friends. It'll be a nightmare to remember. A nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Sometimes, if you dream hard enough. Have you ever seen him do anything weird? That's all I've ever seen him do. And love long enough. Eric, get away from the edge. Anything is possible. You can fly. There's a magic that goes beyond dreams. The boy who could fly. Here's one from HBO Pictures. Fire away. A religious fanatic is on the warpath, and somebody's got to stop him. Why are you telling me this? Need a tracker. Chris Christopherson is taking no prisoners. Don't get a trial? All you get is dead. The tracker. Then a boxer whose own career is washed up. Cool breeze. Finds a second chance at greatness through two kids from the street. Let these boys fight. Klaus Maria Brandauer, Streets of Gold. She was a lover of literature. He was a seller of books. You're the only soul alive who understands me. Their love of words became a love for each other. Anne Bancroft and Anthony Hopkins, 84 Charing Cross Road. And coming soon, Gene Hackman in Hoosiers, Steve Gutenberg in Police Academy 4, and Bruce Willis meets Kim Basinger on a blind date. It's all the best, all through March on HBO. If the question is about celebrities, the answer can be found on HBO Q&A. Leslie Ann Warren is a small town honey with some fine aspirations in Baja, Oklahoma. This month from HBO Pictures, how did this real-life city girl prepare herself for such a country role? I spent um, two and a half months in Austin, and I hung out with a lot of the women that, that were involved with Willie's band, Willie Nelson's you know, band. Um, and it was important to, to get an understanding of what their priorities are, because it's different. I mean, I'm from New York, you know, I grew up in a city and, you know, very sophisticated kind of atmosphere, and these, these people are, um, you know, it's a much more rural background with, um, with a different, you know, value system. So it was very helpful for me, and I brought that experience into, into Baja. Leslie Ann Warren in Baja, Oklahoma. It's Baja, Oklahoma, but it's this is HBO Q&A. And now, out of Hollywood, with one of this year's Oscar-nominated performances. I still get nervous, very nervous, if I have to audition. Um, if I have to sing in front of people, if I have to go on a, an awards thing, if I have to speak, uh, impromptu speak, I'm just terrified. I'm much more comfortable enclosed in a world of fiction. In reality, hers are the same emotions and fears of any actress looking for a big break. 
But Meryl Streep is far from a novice, as her two Oscars, six nominations, an Emmy, and a slew of other awards will attest. Yet she still believes that getting to the top takes more than talent. With the benefit of hindsight, I can look back and say, that led to that, led to that, led to that. But it didn't necessarily have to. Lots of people open a show at the public theater like I did, and nothing happens. You know, it's just a series of uh, fortuitous coincidences and breaks, and that's how fate works. Fate now reteams Merrill with producer Keith Barish. Their first collaboration on Sophie's Choice earned her the Best Actress Oscar in 1982. I got up at the Academy Awards and accepted the thing and named everybody on the crew except him. He produced it, so thanks, Keith. He also produced Ironweed. Thank God. Ironweed also reunites Merrill with fellow Academy Award winner Jack Nicholson as outcasts in this Taft Entertainment Keith Barish production. I believe you die when you can't stand it anymore. Take as much as you can, then you... you die when you can. Well, it's as good a saying as there is. Die when you can. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we agree on something for once. In this powerful motion picture, based on William Kennedy's Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, Merrill plays Helen Archer, a woman who tenuously holds on to the present by clinging to her past. Helen Archer. Yes. Nora Helen. I haven't seen you in 20 years. I, I, I used to hear you on the radio, but then I, I lost track. What have you been doing? Well, I went on concert tour as a pianist. Huh. And then I was uh, abroad for years. Oh. Living in Paris and Vienna. Mm. And everywhere. How exciting. What an exciting life. I envy you, Helen. I really do. In this do. world, this sort of purgatory of souls, there are very few um, markers to go by. And I like that about her. I like not having to worry about how I looked <laughs> and just kind of strip away, strip away everything except what counts. Oh, forgive me, forgive me for our sin. If you must call them sins, you know, I call them decisions, so. I, I'm not a drunk and I'm not a whore and I never let a man use me for money. You know, I went Dutch lots of times and I... Well, I would let them buy the drinks, but that's because it's a man's place to buy the drinks. And I never, ever betrayed anybody. And that's what counts with me. She had a lot of promise, but like... Everybody, who knows why people self-destruct? I think it has to do with their individual um, chemistry more than almost anything. As a mother, I have to believe this because it's not going to be my fault if anything goes wrong with my kid. But do you know what I mean? I mean, we can all point to uh, mitigating circumstances uh, in someone's life. But I think a lot of it is just... Whatever your interior engine is that decides to keep going in the morning or just to shut off. But as an actress, Meryl shows no signs of shutting off or even slowing down. Motivated perhaps by a feeling many actors share. Fear. You do have the fear. Plus, you have the fear you won't get offered anything even after that job. Right? Because the fear is always there with actors that you'll never work again. That goes with the territory. For this and other Oscar-nominated films out of Hollywood, join me, Matt Lauer, when we take a special look at this year's Oscar nominations on the headline edition of HBO Entertainment News, this month only on HBO. Anne Bancroft and Anthony Hopkins star as transatlantic correspondents whose mutual love of books forms the basis of a lasting friendship. 84 Charing Cross Road is next.
And now, a word about the next HBO Pictures presentation. My name's Dan Jenkins, and I've got a story for you. Why don't you wrap your hand around a long neck, sit down and get comfortable. Let me tell you about some friends of mine at a place called Herb's Bar and Grill. It's located due south of Oklahoma, in a little place called Texas. First of all, there's a real pretty lady called Juanita Hutchins. She was well suited for love, although she said she'd been about as entertained by love as she ever cared to be. Man! I'll never leave you with the fingerprints and the beginnings of a baby. There's an old boy named Slick Henderson. Now, he seldom ever grinned, except when he looked at Juanita, or when he recalled his sporting life as a husband. I stayed out all night with some persuasive little home wrecker, told me I wouldn't have to take off my socks. As for Doris Stedman, the men in her life were seldom to be confused with her husband. It's fun, damn it. Anybody who says it's not is either a liar or doing it wrong. Lonnie Slocum's a wasted old boy with his own country band. Thinks he's a local celebrity. He can't even remember what yesterday was like. I will not quarrel with that diagnosis. I better not forget old what's-his-name. He is, of course, the poet laureate of Texas. The highway going nowhere. Never can tell where he'll turn up. I guess some people would call this a romantic comedy. I'd agree with that. I'd also say it's a story about trying to hang on to a dream. It's about survival. About trying to find something to laugh at when everything's going bad. And I guess you could say that, yeah, I'm guilty. I wrote the book. Baja, Oklahoma, the movie its own self, tonight on HBO. I'm Dan Jenkins. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I'm not smart enough to know all the answers. But I do know we've got to keep asking the question. That's what the American experiment is all about. It's at the very core of our character as a people. We owe our vigor to its constant renewal. You know, I don't have much patience for these guys who go around uh, saying the pride is back in America. For some of us, it never left. Tanner, 88. The campaign continues March 15th on HBO. He rocked the Capitol. He shocked the White House. He turned Lincoln on his ear. Now see Saturday Night Live's Dennis Miller do to Washington what Washington usually does to you. It's the sort of place where people read the Sunday comics with a yellow highlighter. When Mr. Miller goes to Washington, this place makes Mayberry look like a think tank. America, watch out. Thursday on HBO, the home of comedy. Here, Vietnam through their ears when Dear America comes to HBO Sunday, April 3rd. The best in television. Nobody brings it home like HBO. The following movie has been rated PG by the Motion Picture Association of America. Parental guidance is suggested.